The Dasmicro Gyro V5 is the best gyro I've ever tried in its price range. Today I will show you how to install it, set the EPA, adjust the gyro direction, choose the gyro mode, and manually configure its sensitivity on the stock electronics of an RC car. In this video I used the WL Toys 128, but this gyro can also be used in larger scale RC cars. I bought the Gyro V5 for around $20, and it did not come with a casing. It only comes with a 1.5mm JST 4-pin cable. Honestly, before trying it myself, I had doubts about its performance because it is so small. I wondered what such a small gyro could do. But it turns out that its performance is very good. It's slightly better than the Dumbo RC Gyro, which is priced similarly. In fact, I think its performance is almost as good as the Yokomo V4, which costs three times as much. I have the WL Toys 284131 version 2, so the servo connector uses the smaller 1.25mm JST connector, which is smaller than the 1.5mm connector of the Gyro V5, so we need a converter table. For the K989 and K969 or 110 scale RC cars, simply buy a 1.5mm 4-pin JST to JR servo cable like this, and a 1.5mm 3-pin JST to JR servo cable like this. As for me, since my servo connector is small, I needed to modify it first. I bought a normal sized servo extension cable. After disconnecting the servo from the electronics, cut the stock servo cable. Separate the stock servo wires to make them easier to strip. Then, cut the extension cable. Connect this end to the servo. You can solder the wires, but if you don't have a soldering iron, you can just twist them together. Brown to black, red to red, orange to white. This is what it looks like after being connected to the servo. Meanwhile, the other connector is connected to a female Futaba connector like this. Again, if your WL Toys uses a normal sized servo connector, you don't need to bother making this adapter cable. The gyro can be installed in almost any RC car that uses a three pin servo. The gyro is placed between the receiver, or car electronics, and the servo. Um, here's an example using a cheap gyro to make it easier to understand. Back to the gyro V5, I made a case using a 3D printer. To install it, just attach double-sided tape to the case. However, I recommend using clear gel-like double-sided tape because it's more flexible and sticks better to the uneven surface of the gyro. Anyway, if you don't want to use a case, you can attach it directly to the car. The three pin cable is connected to the servo. Brown to black, red to red, orange to white. From the four pin cable, this connects to the RC electronics. Or if using a WL Toys 2D84131 V2, connect it first to the adapter table we made earlier, then connect it to the car electronics. Anyway, the adapter cable I bought seems to be assembled incorrectly, with the signal and negative wires reversed. So I installed it in reverse as shown in the video, because I didn't feel like rewiring it. Um, so if when you connect it, the gyro light doesn't turn on, or the gyro light turns on, but the servo doesn't move, it might be that the cables are connected the wrong way around. If you connect it the wrong way, it won't cause damage. It just won't turn on. However, make sure the positive cable, the middle one, is correctly placed in the center. Now let's connect it to the car's electronics. I attached my gyro on the upper deck with double-sided tape. Some say the ideal position for a gyro is as low as possible and in the center. But based on my experience, the ideal position for the gyro can vary with each chassis, and you need to test it yourself to find the best position. How to set up the gyro V5. Turn on the transmitter, then turn on the car. If you are using the 284131, first bind the remote by steering it to the right. Then turn off the car again, but leave the remote on. Press and hold the button on the gyro. Then, turn on the car's electronics. Keep holding the gyro button until the gyro light stops flashing rapidly, then release it. Turn the remote to the left and hold it until the wheels automatically return to the center position. After that, turn the remote to the right and hold it until the wheels automatically return to the center position. And we're done setting the EPA and the gyro movement is correct. When the rear end slides to the left, the steering also turns left to stabilize. When the rear end slides to the right, the steering turns to the right. To reverse the gyro's direction, turn off the car. Then press and hold the button on the gyro. Then, turn on the car's electronics. Keep holding the gyro button until the gyro light stops flashing rapidly, then release it. Turn the remote to the right and hold it until the wheels automatically return to the center position. So if previously we turned left first, this time we turn right first. After that, 
turn the remote to the left and hold it until the wheels automatically return to the center position. Here is an example of incorrect movement. When the rear end slides to the left, the steering turns right. When the rear end slides to the right, the steering turns left. This would make the car spin out even more. So in my car, the gyro movement is correct if I first turn it to the left during the setup, as we did initially. The gyro is off when this part is centered, aligned with the gyro light. To increase sensitivity, you can turn it left or right. The further it is from the center position, the higher the gyro sensitivity. If we turn it to the left, the steering will instantly return to the center position after being controlled by the gyro. This setting is suitable for tracks with a lot of sharp turns. Now, we turn it to the right. The principle is the same. The further from the center position, the more sensitive the gyro is to the car's movements. The difference is that if we turn it to the right after the servo is moved by the gyro, the steering will slowly return to the center position as shown in the video. This will make the drift appear smoother and less jerky. For beginners, it is recommended to adjust the gyro sensitivity by turning it to the right. Once you become more skilled, you can try turning it to the left. Anyway, for this one port on the gyro V5, it is for plugging into receiver channel 3 or 4, depending on the remote used if you're using a third-party remote. This is to control the gain or sensitivity of the gyro via the remote, so you don't need to use a rotary switch. A few notes. First, don't buy the V6 gyro if you plan to use standard electronics, because the gyro V6 does not have a dial to adjust gyro sensitivity and must use a third-party remote. Second, for my WL Toys RWD conversion, which hasn't had its Ackerman, Camber, Toe, and Caster settings adjusted yet, because I haven't had time to tinker with it further, the gyro settings can only go up to a maximum of 30 to 40 percent. Beyond that, the tires will wobble, but if it is set below that, for example, only at 20 percent, the car is prone to spinning out. However, you need to test it yourself to find the ideal gyro sensitivity. But with just a gyro V5 and some light modifications that cost nothing, without buying anything or 3D printing, you can already drift with the WL Toys 128, although it may not be as smooth as a more properly set up RC drift car. Search the hashtag mix 28 wl for more WL Toys 128 videos. Thank you for visiting the Creek Mix channel. Hopefully this is useful to someone and see you in the next video.